Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today for the Kentix webinar. Uh, we will, uh, the webinar will be based around physical data security in the age of cyber attacks, as all you know. Uh, we will have Jan Sanders presenting for you today, uh, and he's the Chief Sales Officer of uh, Kentix. Uh, the webinar will take around one hour of your time, and um, depending on how many questions we receive, it will it might be shorter or a bit longer, but we're aiming for approximately one hour. Uh, uh, I would like to remind before we uh, begin for everyone to mute their microphones, please. It will be easier for Jan to present and it will be easier for all of you to hear uh, what he has to say without any disturbances. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the chat uh, below. Uh, we will address them at the end of the presentation, and if you're more comfortable with writing your questions in Lithuanian or Estonian, you can do that as well, and Signa and I will try our best to translate them for Jan, and he will answer those as well. Uh, so uh, that's it for the general information. Uh, Jan, if you're ready, uh, we can start. Okay, thank you very much, Angelica. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yes, hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to see you here uh, or meet you here uh, virtually. Um, next time we have to do this uh, physically. So uh, you already saw this. My name is Jan Sanders. Um, I'm the CSO, so sales responsible for uh, Kentix um, here in, uh, based here in Germany. We are based uh, in uh, Germany. Somebody, some uh, know Frankfurt, uh, I guess. So we are 150 kilometers southwest of Frankfurt. Um, where we um, uh, have, have the company established. Yeah, it's my, my pleasure to, to talk to you uh, through physical security, what, what, what you can do here. I think a lot of people are talking about uh, cyber security all the time. Um, and uh, that's, that's a very big, big uh, topic, obviously, but um, uh, not really smaller, the uh, physical security part when it comes to uh, threats. Uh, is, is here also. So um, it's very important. We obviously believe, but I think uh, after the presentation, I'll also get, uh, get you a bit more information about this. Uh, physical security is a very, very important piece uh, to make sure that high availability of what's important for you, technical equipment, but obviously IT equipment is there. So I will have, I will try to make it a bit, a bit uh, um, dynamic. Uh, you will see me from time to time on the screen, but uh, obviously I will also have some uh, slides for you prepared uh, uh, while we go through the presentation, obviously. So questions, please put them in the, into the chat or the uh, F&A box. Um, I will uh, definitely answer your questions then later on. Okay. So I hope you can all see my screen. Yes, should be. <laughs> okay, let me get started. So Cantix is uh, physical security for a digital world. We are more and more getting into a digital world. Also uh, on this uh, pandemic we are, we are currently in. So it's a good time to also talk about this, close your physical security gaps and uh, establish basic IT protection, which is very important to avoid substantial damages. And before I start, let me have a bit of an introduction of um, who Cantix is. Just stopping on my equipment right now. Getting there. No, I have to have to do this manually. Okay, here we go. Bit of the top facts of uh, Kentix. So Kentix is a private owned company founded 2010. So we are quite young, quite young and very innovative. Our founder and manager and director and obviously also um, yeah, innovative head is uh, Thomas Fritz. So he's running the company and he's owning the company. And what's very important is that we here in the Southwest of Germany and Ida Oberstein, some, some have or may maybe already been there, uh, who likes uh, gemstones. So <laughs> Ida Oberstein is very well known for gemstones, but also for Kentix technology. So we do everything here in Ida Oberstein. We do the development, the design, the production, marketing, and sales all, all from here. We are currently uh, building um, uh, a new um, uh, 
uh, hall next to our building where we are now uh, since two years. So this is already getting too small. Um, we, we, we are um, uh, right now building the, the next hall already for production. Right now here in uh, Ida Oberstein, we run 50 employees and we definitely have exponential growth also obviously in sales. So it's already the fourth year in a row where we, where we grow more than 50%. So sales we do via our partner structure in your countries. Um, this is uh, Altas. Uh, in the Baltic uh, countries, um, we um, exclusively uh, market our products through Altas. And definitely, we are your specialists for physical security of, and that's important, centralized, so data centers, all these kind of things, but also decentralized infrastructures, regardless this is technical or even like also IT infrastructure. Everything what's, what's critical infrastructure, uh, physical security, yeah, we are specialists. And why is that important? Because it's important for every industry, because every business these days is already a digital business and there's no business without IT anymore. Yeah. So think about what, what happens when, when your IT fails, um, which kind of, um, uh, um, yeah, which kind of impact this will, will then have for you. And that, there's also some numbers and facts about this. So what we can see across Europe, obviously, um, is that 77% of all companies have at least one or more IT system failures per year. And also very interesting to know is that it's not all cybersecurity. 50% of these IT system failures are caused by physical threats like um, like, uh, yeah, uh, UPS failures, so uh, equipment failures, uh, failure of, of, of the cooling, software failures, obviously also power failure, a fire uh, coming up, uh, leakages, but also, um, yeah, unwanted or even maybe wanted human behaviors. So these are a lot of threats or physical threats, which uh, causes these kind of uh, downtimes. And usually, um, in average, you got a four hour of, of uh, IT uh, um, uh, downtime uh, per failure. Yeah, and in average, four times a year, a company gets uh, gets this uh, this this uh, power failure or uh, IT system failures. And obviously, there is a lot of costs or losses involved to um, yeah to this this power failure. So um, I think even even. Uh, even uh, the um, the um, the cost of a of a of a failure is is multiple time higher than the investment cost to overcome this these kind of things. I've also give you some some bit of of of, of um, yeah uh, brain opener maybe let's call it brain opener uh, for for this session. What's also happen in future? You you might already uh, see this. So five G for example is coming. We all know that. The Internet of Things, so the uh, business, our industry, IoT devices are getting closer. We're getting getting more to autonomous driving and these kind of things. And technologies like five G is also powering this. And uh, because we, we we need very low latency of of, of uh, data transfer, we will see in the coming years a lot of uh, computing power coming closer to the application, which we then call is the, is the uh, edge, edge computing. So it's not only say the big data centers and clouds, uh, which need security, but it's also the edge data centers, which is a very strong trend as, um, yeah, as computing power is getting closer to the application. And yeah, that's the question why, why we do need edge computing, because um, there is a geographical limitation of real-time communication. What does that mean? Real-time communication is the uh, communication between a sensor and an actor, and in between you have a data transmission. So to do real-time communication, um, you have to transfer information, so the sensor data to the actor within one millisecond. Uh, um, on the sensor and on the actor's, uh, actor side, you also have a have a have a 0.3 millisecond of uh, operating time for for um, for this data to make an analog signal, a digital signal, a signal, a digital signal, an analog signal. So for the pure transmission, 
you only have 0.4 milliseconds time to um, to to uh, get into the real time communication. This means that yeah, in the end, if you look at speed of light, which is like uh, 300 kilometers a second, then you are left with 100 kilometers um, for 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 transporting the uh, uh, the data. So an application can't be more than 120 kilometers away from uh, from the uh, um, um, uh, um, yeah say say computing power so that's the reason why we will see a lot of new edge uh, data computing and this is also what what uh, analysts also show that you see this on the on the on the uh, on the bottom here so in 2019 market size has been say uh, roughly 5.3 billion and uh, within 10 years this grows by factor 10 so also this is a lot uh, is a big big market obviously also for us but uh, also market of um, of applications um, uh, for physical security because more and more equipment where where we also get more and more addicted of so we need this kind of equi equipment being available all the time and needs to be uh, secure uh, uh, sufficient secured um, with also physical security. So that's a bit like setting the scene for why is this important? Why is this a very big growing market uh, while we are getting more and more um, um, yeah, reliant on, on, on uh, these kind of structures? So why does customer choose for Cantix? Yeah? Uh, and uh, obviously the Cantix assortment has, has been growing over the time and um, where, we st where we are standing now, uh, Cantix is replacing up to eight systems. So, in everything we do, yeah, uh, we replace access control, uh, intrusion alarm systems, environmental monitoring, early fire detection, the alarm management, network monitoring. Uh, we do a video documentation of everything what's happening in our system as well as the energy management with our PDU, which comes to a result that, um, yeah. Uh, the, the whole system is replacing eight systems and it makes obviously the, uh, your investment and operating costs um, with Catex like 50% less and you don't have to worry about uh, interfaces any longer. You, you worry about your business and we worry about the rest of the thing because it's all one system and it also offers, but I'm talking about this in a minute, also offers a lot of very nice uh, interfaces to third party devices for um, for uh, or systems for a very easy integration. So that's one of the main reasons because we are uh, all in, in one solution and um, yeah, we have suitable solution for IT or for it all. Um, for example, I have here a, a, a mid-sized data center and uh, see what, what we can all do here. So we do the uh, environmental monitoring and we do the intrusion alarm. We do the early fire detection. I'll go and, go and show you how. Uh, we also can put external alarms from say also like uh, air conditions or UPSs or other machines onto our system. Um, we also have the leakage control. Then we, we control the access on the doors. But, and I also show this live to you, uh, the rec uh, access uh, solution, so we have the full control of uh, uh, from a barrier up to the up to up to the racks. Um, also, the heels check COVID nineteen prevention. I think you you have already seen this in our smart scan. Um, uh, obviously, then also the smart PDU where we have uh, the intelligent power metering and a lot of more features in our smart PDU, but also taking the power monitoring. Uh, into our system as well as the full video documentation. So it's quite a lot of things, and it's um, that's a bit of the beauty of the uh, of our our design. As we are fully uh, industry IoT, it's regardless if I do this on on a on a data center like this and and and, and, and all different sizes, or even on one single rack on an edge data center or a technical room. So. The system is always freely scalable because it uh, has an arch uh, architecture, um, yeah, uh, an uh, IoT architecture, and it's freely scalable from very small. And you can start with small, but you can always add. And it's in principle, it's uh, uh, limitless <coughs> to to um, to expand. 
Once again, not working as I wish it. So in principle, and I'll come to <coughs> the products in a minute, so you get a bit more um, visible understanding of uh, what it's all about. So uh, what we are talking about is an all-in-one security system where everything also very nicely fits together. So you see um, the, uh, the colored uh, squares here. Uh, so that's the smart monitoring we are using for this. We have the smart access, smart PDU, uh, smart video, smart uh, uh, scan, as well as the um, uh, what we call a 360 degree um, Candix Cloud, which is in principle only a, a connector or a handshake between mobile devices and the apps we are running it there and the devices on your side, a secure connection to make sure that no, nobody can, can get in between. So you always get your complete mobile solution there. So uh, you get all the information, but I'll come into this a bit later. Um, but what you also have on the front end, on a, on a web end front end, web front end, sorry, um, you also have on your mobile device. So, but what's even more important on this slide is that you under, have, have a full understanding that it's all about the Cantix OS here in the middle. So the Cantix OS is the operation system, the Cantix operation system. We just lifted it on, a, on the next level, Cantix OS. So we are absolutely state of the art. And I like to call it really that the Cantix OS is our eight cylinder under the hook, which is really, really delivering uh, as a state of the art um, uh, uh, software. So the software is always running on the device it, on the, on the devices the, themselves. Software is always delivered with a product for free. Updates are also for free. So there's no license uh, module behind. And um, the beauty also of the Cantix OS, it's, it's very easy to, to, uh, to work with um, and, and also to program and uh, to operate on the one hand side, but it also offers a really state of the art uh, um, um, uh, interfaces like a REST API, webhooks, SNMP, v2, v3, the LDAP, uh, LDAP integration of Active Directory, email, push notification, everything is on board. It's all on board. There's no no additional thing you have to buy. Um, everything is like like yeah, it's like Lego. Yeah, you can all put this together and also integrate it very easy into uh, into uh, in your in your system. So uh, very important to know here. Uh, and obviously everything, software, hardware is all designed and developed uh, absolutely here in Ida Oberstein, made in Germany. So coming to the products, let's start with uh, with monitoring. That's also with where where where, where Cantix has started off uh, with. On the right hand side, you see the alarm manager. Uh, the alarm manager is in principle like the alarm central, where we collect all um, alarms and then uh, statuses of of all the different sensors we are connecting to the to the system. Um, I'll show you a bit, uh, bit about this uh, in a minute also. You see it is also has two antennas. One antenna is uh, for the radio control of uh, sensors. Uh, we can have radio control sensors as well as wired uh, sensors. But um, the, other, the other antenna is, uh, a four, uh, is an antenna for the 4G modem. So we have a built-in 4G modem. Think of uh, everything breaks down, your whole electricity, and then um, there's no so electricity. Obviously, I can, can't send out an email or something or an uh, SNMP uh, trap or something. So it would not be possible. Then you still can send SMS out of the alarm manager as uh, the alarm manager also has a backup battery. So that's also like one of the, the basic uh, things we're offering here. Um, I'll come to it in a, in a, in a bit uh, in a minute, bit more in detail. That's the, the multi sensor. Yeah, we see it here on the ceiling. Uh, then you can have a leakage sensor, dust sensor, other sensors, um, uh, as well as door sensors, and everything is then co uh, connected also with an IP camera, also taking footage of um, um, events. So this is how how a very easy, say, a server room. Um, um, uh, setup could look like uh, physical security because that's the next thing I, uh, I'm showing to you uh, because 
the multi-sensor is in principle the heart of, of, the, of the smart monitoring. In the multi-sensor, you find all the different sensors. In this case, we even see the, our latest development, which is the multi-sensor TI, thermal imaging. You see the small hole here uh, next to the X um, where there is a, a, a thermal imaging sensor behind uh, having like uh, yeah, 1,024 pixels of which we can read uh, temperatures out. So um, the, the, the standard, the standard multi-sensor has a peer sensor. It also can see movement, but not read out the temperature from, 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 uh, from a picture. Yeah, but this multi-sensor is already collecting all the uh, information, uh, important information. So say temperature, humidity, dew point, also upcoming fires. Um, we see here on the right hand side and also the intrusion alarm because I, I detect even with the thermal imaging uh, sensor, I detect the movement of, of, of people. I have the thermal imaging, I have the air quality which is measured in uh, VOC gases or uh, in, a, in the air quality index. We are measuring VOC gases, so-called volatile organic compounds. Um, and um, um, yeah, we can also do, uh, measure like, like uh, uh, differences in, in, in air pressure. And this, this, this alarms from, 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 from this, uh, the different alarms from multiple sensors then end up also in the alarm manager. And with one single uh, multi-sensor, that's very important to know. That's also a bit, I like the concept, uh, concept of Cantix. We already can monitor a room of up to 20 square meters. So you put it on the ceiling and one single uh, multi-sensor can already do a very sufficient monitoring of all these threads uh, yeah, with just one, one device. Uh, if I have more than 20 square meters, I obviously take more sensors then, or I can also additionally put it into the rack, for example, but there's even smarter solution I'll show you in a minute. So with that sensor, with a multi-sensor TI, we also do uh, early uh, fire detection because I have the thermal imaging sensor where I can look, for example, also for uh, uh, on the on the UPSs which can can heat up or uh, there's, there's there's unwanted high temperatures, um, or I have the um, uh, obviously the the air quality measurements. So if there's a fire coming up, then uh, also the air quality is getting weaker carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is the fire gas number one. Even if I have already smoldering uh, cables, I already can detect very early carbon monoxide. So if there's some weak contact or isolation is breaking up um, and uh, uh, there's a risk of a fire, then you will already see very early uh, carbon monoxide. And in the end, I measure also the temperature increase over time, which brings us to um, on here on the left hand side, we already have hot spots. We have carbon, carbon monoxide and we have air quality uh, through smoldering fires. This already hours or even days before we often have um, uh, 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 customers calling, calling to us, to our support and say, well, actually your CO sensors very often given, given uh, wrong, uh, uh, wrong alarms, yeah, faulty alarms. Uh, then we tell them, please take it very, very serious. Our <laughs> CO sensor doesn't deliver false alarms, but you can't see or you can't smell anything. Um, take it serious or just wait for maybe three, four hours or even a day, and you, then you will see a nice fire coming up. But that's, I think, never an option. <laughs> but uh, this, this is really what, what's happening. So we already detect fires very, very early, even before you can see smoke. It's also a very nice application we have on uh, premises of, of utility companies uh, uh, where they just want to make sure they can detect if a, if a person is in a utility room. So yeah, often have high voltage utility rooms, also where we have uh, tube, uh, uh, tube, tube installations. Uh, yeah, so utility rooms, for, for high energy or uh, even also uh, a critical IT, IT, IT infrastructure. They want to make sure 
there's no person inside or they, 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 they need to understand if there are people inside. So take this, this example, we have a, a, a room which is eight and a half meter long, a three and a half meter wide and four meter high. And um, yeah, well, if we put one of our 90 degrees TI sensors in here, we can already detect the whole room. Yeah, in the darker area, you can detect it uh, yeah, a bit better because usually you're detecting the heads and the shoulders of a person. That's really uh, easy to de uh, detect on the foot system, maybe detection not that strong. Yeah, but uh, if you want to have a really 100% uh, solid detection, you would then just take two, two sensors and then definitely have a very precise um, uh, presence detection in a room where we are always uh, also able to connect even door um, yeah, read contacts, for example, so every single device of Cantix always has two inputs and two outputs, which we, which we uh, potential free inputs and outputs, which we can additionally use to connect like also magnet contacts or something like this. So that's that's a yeah that's a very nice application example where we have a lot of requests for right now also too while while in a lot of cities we we have um, these hundreds of times uh, like te technical rooms. This is what the um, ecosystem, the smart monitoring ecosystem, all over looks like. So on the left hand side you have the alarm manager, which is also. Um, uh, supplying the radio um, uh, signal so uh, you can connect wired as well as uh, wireless uh, uh, um, devices to to that system for wireless uh, we we are using encrypted uh, zigbee signals on 2.4 gigahertz so we can connect them also multi-sensor rf radio frequency uh, wireless uh, in the area of uh, of an uh, alarm manager also multi-sensors, a keypad to arm or disarm an area. Then we got the different multi-sensors, so multi-sensor TI alarm, but also multi-sensor LAN, uh, which can also make uh, radio frequency uh, around uh, its, uh, when, when it's not that close to the alarm manager, so I can have uh, in another premise uh, also a wireless uh, uh, devices then connected to the, to the alarm manager. I have I/O modules where I can have analog or digital additional um, uh, sensors towards uh, it or into the system, so I monitor everything in the alarm manager. Yeah, as you see here, everything is state of the art, always connected with PoE, so devices are always um, powered by PoE or battery in that case, the multi-sensor uh, sensor battery. And on the multi-sensors, I can then connect uh, even more um, sensors like the leakage sensor, dust sensor. The leakage sensor is also available with a rope, 10 or 20 meters. We also have a wider, wider uh, scale of um, yeah, uh, uh, monitoring or even serenes we can connect on the outputs. That's all available. Yeah, so that's that's like the ecosystem for the monitoring part. So then we come to the access control, and then some might think, "Wow, actually, access control." There's a lot of companies around doing access control. Uh, why do I need an, uh, uh, the next one? Yeah, because <laughs> that's part of the all-in-one solution, and we are doing it a bit differently because with Cantix, all single. Uh, lock point is always online, and I show this to you in the in this uh, topology. I think it's best. So, um, and why is this? So, um, we're doing it a bit, bit differently because we're coming out of the critical infrastructure, and in critical infrastructure is always important that you have uh, full transparency on what is happening at my doors. Uh, is my door standing open? Is it closed? Is it locked? Um, who, who has taken access, which access was denied maybe also. Yeah? Uh, how can I manage, uh, manage it? It needs to be centrally managed regardless where I am. So I can manage from here, I can manage um, uh, door locks on the other side of the world because it's all IT connected or IP connected. I can give permissions or um, take away permissions in real time 
Yeah, so I have full control of what's happening at, at the doors as well as have full uh, management possibilities in real time in, um, uh, in the system. And how do we do this? So for, for example, here we have the access manager. The access manager is also then giving the radio frequency to the wireless uh, door knobs, wireless door levers, or also wireless cabinet locks um, yeah, for, the, for, the, for the IT racks or technical racks. But we also have then the wired uh, solution here uh, with our network relay module, where we can have up to two doors uh, connected to this. So two IP wall readers, which then from there we can also from the relay module can also op directly open electrical strikers or electrical uh, electromechanical locks because um, the contacts, the outputs here are also powered through a split away using in, in that uh, device. We at least give uh, 10, 10 volts of on, on uh, no, uh, 10 watts on uh, 24 volt uh, to also open electrical uh, uh, locks or, or strikers. And the power supply is then done uh, again uh, via PoE. Yeah. So additionally, we can also have the IP cabinet locks, but even more than just two, this could be up to 16, but I'm talking about this in a, in a second. So all these lock points are always online and always able to manage. Yeah, if, if, if there's a breakdown in connection could be for a certain re, uh, uh, reason, especially on the, uh, on the on the wireless solution, then all the actions uh, which were taken in between are then uh, later on synchronized to the system, obviously. There's a wide range on, uh, on different kind of readers. They are all uh, obviously RFID readers. We have on every uh, device, we have uh, RFID readers, MyFair, Deskfire mainly, but we can also do uh, other formats. Um, so we have indoor, outdoor readers, uh, also like uh, yeah, smaller size readers, uh, flush mount readers, outdoor readers, or even bio biometrical readers. So a whole range of, 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 of uh, possibilities to open and control doors and access rights. So then we come to the IP cabinet lock, and that's also what I promised to you that I'm going to present this um, to you uh, live. And I think I'm going to do this now. So then uh, you better understand what this is all about. Just a sec, I'm just stopping the screen sharing for a minute, if that works. Okay. I think you still see my screen or do you see me on full screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Okay, I need to stop that. Yeah. Oh, now it stopped. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now you see me full screen, and now you see also here my new friend, my new uh, Reglock device. And um, yeah, there's, there's, it's a very, very, very robust design. So that's um, really like a, a metal uh, Reglock. And I also have here two options to open that Reglock. Um, there's obviously one, one option to do this with the um, my fair desk fire um, uh, transponder. So I put it in front of the device and then you already have seen the, the green LED sliding up and the rack lock is immediately opening. So the mechanical, uh, the mechanic of that rack lock is very nice. So you just pull, um, pull the, uh, uh, the lever of the rack lock and then you got the turning, the, the turning uh, mechanics on the back, uh, back side or the inside of that lock or even a, a swivel um, um, uh, mechanical uh, uh, movement uh, um, uh, uh, for, for yeah, different, different kind of uh, mechanics here, okay? So that's, that's the way on how this is functioning. One hand side, okay, again, the RFID tech or even a four digits pin code. So in this case, one, two, three, four. And it's also um, uh, opening then, but I can also combine obviously the RFID together with the uh, with the pin code. Okay, so that's the two ways on opening it. The installation is also very nice and very very simple. Yeah, so um, 
You got that relay module again here. So this is also, uh, you can mount it on a, on a Dean rail. And uh, here I come with the uh, PUE power, power in here. And uh, from that uh, uh, module, I, uh, I have an RG45. So everything is patched RG45 uh, connector to that distribution box, so-called distribution box. We go into the distribution box. There's one in and there's one out. The out then goes to the next rack. And on my rack, I then also have uh, obviously the possibility to connect two of these levers here but as well as the two magnet contacts. And these magnet contacts are obviously very important because with the magnet contact, I also have always online in real time if my door is, uh, is uh, open or shut. Yeah? If the, the, the rec lock is locked or unlocked, we, we also have a magnet contact here inside that, um, that lever. So I also get the information is the lock locked or unlocked. And here I get the information, is the door closed or open? So everything I need to know. So think about you have um, racks distributed uh, maybe in a central room or even distributed around. Um, for every single rack in real time, I always get the full information of what is the status of my door as well as who has taken access, who has tried to take access uh, and I can manage all the, the, the rights. That's, that's one of the um, requirements we see these days quite a lot. That's also the reason why we have developed it, obviously. And that's also the reason why I showed you this in particular on how we are building these kind of products. So this is all obviously already available. So I go on with some, some slides. So here you see also uh, the topology um, on how this could be, uh, how this could look like uh, up to eight racks. So we can on one single smart relay mod module, we, uh, we can put up to 16 rack locks, uh, but as well as uh, 16 magnet contacts on one relay module. Obviously, if I need more than 16, I, uh, I just add more relay modules. Uh, which then are connected together in a master slave mode. So one is the master where I do all the, the management and, and uh, then where, where I also get all the information from and all the others are, are just slaves, uh, but they are controlled from the master, even, even on software and everything, uh, software updates and so on. In the end, I always have my web front end, as you see this here above where I do all my management. So there's never uh, the client software needed. So everything is run on web, uh, web front ends. Okay, so far about the uh, smart access, there's much more detail. So if you have a, have a, <coughs> have a special application, come back to uh, Altus or, or, or even me. So I'm happy to help you with, um, with the consultancy on this. Also very uh, important uh, piece of our, our business these days is the smart uh, PDU. So power distribution units means the uh, power uh, supply in the racks where you see here 40 HE racks, but we also have uh, uh, 19 inch 2 HE um, possibilities, but I'll show you in a, in, a, in a minute. So this is what, what the PDU, the 40, 40 um, uh, U PDU looks like. Um, very important also for us uh, was by developing uh, this together with our, com uh, with our customers, um, very important was um, robustness and availability. If there's a problem with the elect uh, electrical supply um, in a data center or, um, or even technical racks, then you got a problem. Yeah. So supply, uh, power supply is always the first thing to really make sure this is highly, highly available. So, and um, yeah, the development we, for example, we have done also with the German army here. So we are selling uh, this product also in tons, in big tons uh, to the German army. And uh, yeah, robustness. Robustness um, 
very important. So um, we made it uh, also a very robust metal housing. You can also have this, yeah, if it's scalable business also in, in your colors, uh, if you like. Uh, we have everything uh, cabled inside with six millimeter, uh, square, uh, square millimeter. So um, it's, it's really robust because it can also stand much higher loads. Yeah, but um, it's also very important to know that, that this uh, PDU is always like an intelligent PDU. We have a calibrated measurement of the power supply of uh, all the uh, different phases. We also have an integrated um, um, say, uh, current leakage measurement, so-called RCM, to see if um, isolation, uh, isolation is, is, is breaking. In many countries, you've got, um, you've got uh, uh, regulations for this to do a measurement, uh, 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 current um, leakage measurement once a year. Yeah, to do this, you have to shut down the whole system. Yeah, and you don't want to shut down IT equipment, right? So that's the reason why integrated RC, uh, RCM is uh, is important in many cases because then you measure power leakage twenty four seven. No need to shut something down. Okay. So we obviously monitor all the important parameters of yeah, sure. the current current supply. Um, um, yeah, we uh, lost a bit of track here. Um, yeah, we can also integrate uh, your power meter, your overall power meter, to also uh, play back the PUE. I think uh, maybe some some know uh, what it uh, is. So it's it's a, a grade of your power efficiency in your rack. So, and um, that's that's more for the intelligence side, also on the robustness side. You see here, we have this um, um, circuit breakers here. Yeah, six times the circuit breakers as well as the uh, calibrated uh, meter are um, from ABB. So we are using components, which you also would use in your sub distribution, yeah, because they need to be reliable. And, these uh, these uh, these components uh, really have proved to be uh, most reliable. Um, also, the very important to know for many many people is the the the, the sockets we are using here, C thirteen or C nineteen sockets. Uh, they are IEC lock sockets, so you can't pull them out. Yeah, but uh, um, you can just use standard cables for this, which we are also supplying. Um, so this all about robustness and how this is working and electronical stuff. Um, but the differentiation here clearly lies on, uh, on uh, this top end here, which is um, also representing our multi-sensor. So we have integrated the multi-sensor for temperature, uh, um, temp uh, temperature, humidity, dew point, uh, if you like, also the CO gas uh, early early fire detection into this um, into the the PDU, and can also connect additional sensors to this, like a dust sensor, uh, taking care of um, probably dirt in your in your um, um, in your rack or leakage sensor. So that's on the on the monitoring side. But I can also, as I showed to you. Uh, also uh, add or uh, connect the rack lock or the rack locks of that particular rack to, uh, to, the, to the PDU. So I don't need any cabling in between the racks. Everything is already then built into the PDU. So with that PDU, you get the Cantix all in one solution yeah, into one single device already. So here is where all the different solutions of Cantix come together and really one system product uh, or system solution. So it's a bit about uh, yeah, the uh, different products. There's even more, but uh, also very interesting. We also offer a, a dual, a dual a PDU, which means that has the redundant A and B supply in uh, one unit, so uh, for say maybe smaller, smaller uh, uh, data centers or um, data centers which doesn't have that high load, 
you could even uh, uh, save one PDU. You just use one PDU for A and B supply. That's possible with the uh, dual PDU. Then with the standard PDU um, uh, with 48, 48 C19, or a standard PDU with 40, uh, 24 C19, six, um, six, uh, no, uh, 24 uh, C13 and uh, six C19, sorry. Um, but we can also be, yeah, depending on, on, on volumes, obviously, uh, we can also be very flexible with the kind, but also the layout of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the socket designs here. Also, we have uh, two versions right now of um, the uh, two uh, UPDUs uh, in 19 inch. Yeah. So uh, there's also like a dual PDU with uh, two, two times eight C13 sockets, which also has all the power measurement and uh, leakage, uh, 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 leakage uh, current leakage measurements, as well as also a PDU with 16 C, uh, C13s. These are more like PDUs for, yeah, like um, distributed IT racks or um, also uh, uh, lower loads here. Okay, so much on the on the PDU where everything in principle comes together. Uh, the smart video in principle is a placeholder for. Yes, obviously we, we also sell some 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 cameras if needed, but I think uh, Altus is taking care of that. Um, but uh, we connect IP cameras, obviously also more bodies IP cameras to our system. So if there's an event, we just grab uh, a single pictures from that event, put it to to uh, to um, uh, uh, we pick the, the the pictures from the cameras and put it to the event in our system. So whenever you look up certain events, like who has taken access somewhere, what happened in a, in a fire alarm, so what was happening there. So we always have the pictures in our systems as well. And then obviously the uh, Kent Experience 60 cloud. So it's not like a cloud where we're storing things. It's just like a handshake in between uh, the mobile devices and uh, the, the devices uh, on premise. In principle, it's all ending up in, uh, you have your alarm central in your pocket. Yeah, So we can display the system status, we can do the arming and disarming of different zones. We, we um, see all the uh, measured values of all the sensors. We can open doors, remotely open doors from there. And uh, you can also have a live view of the video in principle. So, Almost there, yeah. So finalizing. So uh, the top advantages of uh, the Kentix systems, uh, just to summarize them. So it's an all-in-one system where you really have low investment costs, low capex costs. So it's a very easy integration, uh, high overall system stability because, uh, yeah, you only got one interface, the, the Kentix OS. So you don't have to care about these kind of things. So complete physical protection for different kind of application. It's absolutely free scalable from small into, into large, whatever you need. Um, absolutely state of the art industry IoT systems with all the interfaces into the third party world. Uh, very user friendly, easy management. So it's not really ro rocket science. Uh, uh, we, we are running here, um, central ride management, everything is there. And it's, it's very cost efficient, also low operation cost, reduced OPEX due to the fact that we don't have the license fees, um, very easy administration, and very, very low maintenance overall. So a perfect system for, yeah, for you to run and to overcome physical threats in yeah, central as well as distributed uh, infrastructures. And there's obviously a lot of things on our website. So take a look, there's application finders uh, for your application, uh, server, uh, so server room checks, a lot of different tools. So check them out, please. And if you like, we can also talk about references. There's even more references also on our website. Um, yeah, as we do, I think uh, already quite, Quite a, quite a lot of nice uh, references already. Okay, so that that's it as a uh, 
principal overview of everything we are doing here. Um, so I'm not sure because we can't control this so far. If there's any questions so mm -hmm. far. Yes, there is one Estonian question. Uh, I think it got already answered, but uh, does the software run somewhere in the cloud or can we run it uh, in the internal network? Mm. The software is always running on the device it itself. So it's never, never run uh, uh, on, uh, on any cloud. Um, if you have really larger scale um, uh, projects, I'm just thinking about um, also uh, maybe con uh, access control projects where we have a few hundred doors and, and, and a lot of uh, uses. We can also offer you to put, uh, say, the, uh, our software, if you like, we can put it onto a virtual uh, Linux machine uh, just to have, have um, say, a proper installation there in a, in a, in a secured uh, environment. So that, that's possible, but in principle, and in a standard software is always already on the device. It's delivered. The device is delivered with the with the um, uh, with the software, and um, uh, so no no storage and no running on 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 the, on the cloud now. Thank you. Hey. Mm. Any more questions? Or you save your questions for later. That's all good. So I'm not running away. So uh, uh, the colleagues from Altus know how to get hold of me. Yeah. So, so. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, yeah. Of course. Uh, we hope that all of the questions were answered today. If not. Uh, we're always reachable for every single one of you. So most of you have our contacts. If not, they're on the screen. And we're happy to, to uh, answer your questions by email, by phone. So just contact us and uh, we'll respond. And thank you, Jan, for, for the presentation and for your time. Yeah, thank you for your attention. And whatever is needed, also looking into your application, uh, yeah. Just let the other people know, and uh, I'm happy to join in and uh, also help consulting into your your application. Thank you very much. Okay, thank yeah. you everyone, and thank have you. a nice Take day. Care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good time.